labeling is required in over 50 countries around the world. And you don't have to uh, take my word for it. Just Google uh, Kellogg's and England or Nestle and Germany. Uh, they're selling the same products over there that they sell here and that they would be selling in California, except they're required to label genetically engineered food. That's point one. And there's been no, no cost increases that they've reported whatsoever because the companies have responded. You, you brag about how the dynamic the food industry is and how dynamic farmers are. Uh, they'll be dynamic enough to deal with this. And the study you're re referencing, I believe, was paid for by the pesticide companies and the food companies that are opposing 37. Mm -hmm. They paid for it in Oregon, and then it was used back down here. Uh, my other point would be, and I'm so always uh, surprised to hear uh, this argument made, but particularly with you, Kent, that there would be no value to consumers from labeling when your uh, work, which I believe would be publicly funded, has shown how valuable labeling can be for farmers, food companies, and pesticide companies where genetically engineered crops are involved. You call it uh, identity preservation. You wrote a beautiful paper on it, and the word labeling appears throughout there. And here's what it says. Let me tell you what that means. If a pesticide company genetically engineers a crop, a seed, they want to sell it for the maximum value. And sometimes that means they have to sell it to a farmer who will be able to sell that trade on the marketplace. Some of these traits have to do, for example, with making a special kind of corn that is ideally suited for making ethanol. Food companies don't like that corn. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. And the farmers, in order to take advantage of having spent more money on that seed, they have to demonstrate, document, that they have brought that kind of seed to the grain elevator. And the chemical companies that invented this seed want to be able to sell it to the farmers at a higher price, which means it goes right through the system. So what it seems to me, Kent, is something like this. Uh, we have a law in California that rice farmers lobbied through to make sure that genetically engineered crops of rice, if they're ever grown here, will be strictly labeled and tracked. And my feeling is, when I read your work, Kent, and I see the distinction between giving consumers the right to know where they simply feel that they have that right, and this is America, the consumer's always right, versus your view that it's OK and, in fact, necessary to label when it benefits the pesticide companies. We want labels then going through the food chain. We want labels when the, for the farmer when he takes it to the elevator or to the processing source. And we want to make sure that the food companies don't lose money when a mislabeled product gets into our food that they don't want. So is it not the case that you're in favor of labeling when it helps everybody in the food chain except consumers? No, it's not the case. Can I respond? Ken Brer, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate that you have uh, affirmed that I am an expert on identity preservation in agriculture. <laughs> because I want to first get back to the, uh, the cost issue and tell you where the costs come from. Uh, the, the studies that have been supported by the Yes on 37 uh, program suggest that it's, it's actually trivial. It's just changing a label, and labels change all the time. What's, what's the big deal? Just add it to the label. The problem is, is as uh, Jessica said, is that if someone challenges that and it says, well, you, this ought to be labeled, okay, you're just supposed to produce an affidavit. The grocery store says, well, I have an affidavit, and this just says where that, where that came from. Well. What is that? That person has to know, the person that sold it to them has to know where that came from. And the person who sold it to them has to know where that came from. And it stretches all the way back to the farmer. So we're going to have an enormous bookkeeping system that will be imposed upon the entire manufacturing, food manufacturing industry because it's mainly, as uh, there are so many exemptions in the, in the rule, that it's mainly going to be processed foods, mainly uh, foods that are going to be captured that now this poor grocer at the end is going to be sued by these lawsuits and because they can't produce an affidavit. And even if they do, uh, you know that the lawyers will en encroach on everyone. In other words, it will just pass on uh, back down the way. I think it's also very important to have a distinction between branding and labeling. Branding is what you're talking about. You're talking about identity-preserved products. And that's what we have. We have identity-preserved products that say GM-free, for example. We have identity-preserved products that uh, channel different products, generally people who want to have those pay a, a premium for them. Usually there's a premium for GMO free. Not organic, but yeah, there's an even bigger premium for, for that. In other words, it costs money to do that channeling. It costs a lot of money to do that channeling, and that's why it's reserved for places where it's really needed. That is where the product is very special and it needs certain properties. Okay, that's worth the effort to do that. 
Now we're talking about commodity. We're talking about just corn oil, soybean oil, starch, things that go into thousands, tens of thousands actually, perhaps 40,000 products in a supermarket. And that means those manufacturers will have to follow the entire supply chain of every one of those ingredients. They go to make a cake mix and put it on the shelf. They're going to have to know the entire supply chain of every one of those ingredients all the way back to the farmer. Now, that has to raise costs. And these are, this is where the costs come. I mean, I've seen the, the, the Proposition 37 study that was supported by them that says, oh, it's just a matter of changing labels. Well, this, is, you know, this just does not, it's too naive. It's clear that that's where the cost will come, is back to try to have an identity preserved system. If you think, you go in the store and you look for that special label, that organic label, that GM label, it's higher cost. Now you're saying, but oh, not, but it won't cost anymore not to any, do this. It not anywhere else in the world. Scope. Why, is it, why can that. they do it in China? Why can they do it in France and Italy and everywhere you else? You know, I, I was in France. I was in France and I was in the Netherlands. I was in Europe for a month this summer. You did not see a single product on the market in a grocery store in Europe with that label. You yeah, because they, the company switched out. No, because in Europe. They provided Europe, the food and no extra cost. No, because they really, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but in Europe, they, uh, when they tried to initiate those labels, they put labels on the things in the food, uh, there were pickets and, uh, and boycotts out in the streets. You so mean, in consumers other words, made decisions. I hate that. Well, consumers made decisions, but they made a decision. They have no choice. The, the consumers in Europe have no choice because there are no GE foods in those supermarkets. Now, if that's your goal, okay. <laughs> I'm happy for that. Well, but, but there is food. There is food in the supermarkets. Bread, 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 bread. That was a market response, right? That's a market response, but I, think we, I don't think we have a completely a, you know, a random uh, audience here, as you pointed out, that it's He's okay. not talking about the applause. <laughs> He's talking about what happened. I mean, if people can, not, you're, no, about the, the, if the people can afford to, uh, not this market. If people can afford to already buy higher price foods, and so it's not a problem. But you know, we've got a, we had a severe drought in the Midwest this summer, and it caused grain prices to go up. It's made grain prices go up around the world because those markets are interlinked. Every time prices go up, it's not a problem for us, a few more cents. I mean, the amount of cost in a, in a box of cornflakes is trivial. It really doesn't affect good us point. much at all. Very good However, point. around the world, people who rely can barely afford food for themselves. Those increases in, in price raise the poverty level, the malnutrition level, the food insecurity level immediately. Well, Ken, so you're, we have technologies we, that are helping to stop, keep costs why, lower. Why wouldn't we stop exporting or using 40% of our corn for ethanol if we're so worried about those poor people? Yeah. Really. If you're, so, if you're so worried about them, join me in lobbying the ethanol lobby and the industry to say we should not be devoting 40% of our corn crop to put into our SUVs. Hey, I'm off. if you want to do that, Go lobby that. Why put a label on our food that's going to cost us all a well, lot I'm of money to indirectly try to achieve that goal? If I, you really don't like that, go, go well, challenge we, the energy conference. We, go challenge the energy no, law. We, we do. Right, I'm just saying you don't. Uh,